Security experts recommend the use of passphrases as the most secure and easy to remember way to stay logged into all your favorite places. Simply put, a passphrase is just a string of words. But similar to passwords, you still want to avoid easy to guess ones like a common phrase, a question, or even your favorite song lyric. You want it to be a little random, but something you might remember like, easy to see, you are a cutie. The longer, the better. But of course, too long and you'll probably start to forget. Now you don't want to use the same password for different accounts. The last thing you want is a data breach in just one account, and now everything with the same password is now compromised. So imagine logging into every website, bank account, social media platform, and having to come up with new passwords. So start smart and create unique, strong passphrases for different accounts. How do I keep my internet searches private? Asking for a friend. We've all made our fair share of embarrassing, personal, or even repetitive searches. Sinead's net worth. $20? That much? But to advertisers, your intimate and even mundane queries can lead to a gold mine of targeted advertising opportunities. While there is a plethora of methods you could use to improve your confidentiality, like yeeting your laptop into the ocean, private tabs can offer a much less destructive route. Most modern web browsers will offer private or incognito tabs as a feature. If you've ever opened one accidentally, you might have noticed that you've been signed out of all your apps and websites. This is because private tabs don't send your browser regular cookies. Advertisers will use cookies or data stored on your device to track your behavior online. The data they collect on you is crucial in creating a living profile for you that generates advertisements based on your ever-changing interests. Using a private tab to keep your regular cookies private is a quick and easy way to increase your level of privacy without installing any new software on your device. It also comes with the added benefits of automatically deleting your browsing history when you close the window, so nobody else using that device can see where you've been. Once your attempt to connect to a website has gone through, information like your IP address and location are still visible to advertisers, search engines, and the websites you visit. So you may still see some alarming ads when you thought your tracks were being covered. I work for a company that rhymes with Bamazon. Should I be worried when talking about my boss near my Bamazon smart devices? Before diving into this, we need to make sure we're not being monitored. Alexa, self-destruct. Great, now we should be safe. So, voice-activated smart devices are always listening, but they're not listening for your juicy secrets. They only respond to their wake words, Alexa, OK Google, Hey Siri, or at least they're supposed to. A recent study found that most smart speakers will wake up about once per hour on a false positive. These false positives are often triggered by words similar to their wake words or by dialogue in TV shows. That's happened to me before. Huh? What? Who said your name? This may sound scary, but the data being collected during these false positives helps the device discern what's a real command and what's a fake one. When a command is determined to be a false positive, the microphone shuts off within seconds. Not that it's any less scary that they are slowly learning when they are not being summoned. So then, what's happening when they're just chilling? Are they thinking? That said, the practices of these companies don't always keep your privacy in mind. If you're concerned about potential risks, a good way to avoid randomly triggering your smart assistant is to mute the microphone when you're not using it. Sure, it turns into a paperweight until unmuted, but it means you can dish on your boss knowing they'll be none the wiser. You should also look for any products that keep your data stored locally rather than in the cloud. Local storage is always safer, as it can't be accessed from outside your home. And it's nice to know that you can always take a hammer to your toaster if you think it hurt your secrets. Can I stop third-party cookies from tracking me, or have the cookies already won? Good question. Lucky for you, I've got this nifty-difty little tape that should give us a few tips. Roll the tape. Hello, I'm Cookie Smasherson, and welcome to how to smash cookies with Cookie Smasherson. <laughs> You'll learn three basic defenses that anyone can use to get third-party cookies. Deny, delete, and disguise. Yeah! You're browsing the internet using your high-speed data connection. Your page loads up, and you're accosted with pop-up after pop-up asking you to accept the cookie policy. Deny those cookies. You gotta delete those cookies. Get them out of here. Leave my data alone, you no good for nothing advertisers. But how can you defend yourself against the cookies of internet's future? Disguise, 
There are extensions that can help you contain third-party cookies and keep them from tracking you between clicks. With these three techniques, you can browse the internet safely, knowing your PC and identity are a little safer than what they were yesterday. I'm Cookie Smasher, Sim. Deny, delete, and disguise. Anyway, while those three methods are some of the easier ways you can prevent cookies from tracking you, there are other ways you can keep yourself protected, like using private browsing windows or using a browser that has moved away from traditional cookies altogether. Maybe you heard Google is planning on phasing out cookies from Chrome. That's fantastic, but if you want cookie defense now, Firefox is a browser that already does that. You go, Firefox. Well, that's all the time we have for this week's episode. Hopefully, you learned a thing or two about cookies. Is it just me or does anyone else have a weird hankering for cookies right about now? What can I do to keep seasonal advertisers from stalking me year round? Oh, the dreaded holiday ad hangover. Ha, the time of year just after the holidays when you're still being served ads for the things you wanted, except now at full price. There are so many ways you can protect yourself online, and we've covered quite a few of them already in previous videos. Since it's lunchtime and I haven't eaten yet, let's start with cookies. As always, you should be rejecting third-party cookies on every site that asks. Those are the sketchy cookies, like oatmeal raisin, or dog treats that look a little too much like human food. How was I supposed to know? They were pretty doggone tasty. Rejecting cookies isn't your only option. You can also use a private tab to keep those cookies away. You may even want to set up an entire burner browser for your shopping. Keep all of your shopping in one place, safely tucked away where the trackers can't track you. And trackers gonna track. Using a browser like Firefox Focus, which is specifically designed for privacy, will increase your chances of those advertisers staying locked away from your regular browser. Once the festivities are over and you once again begun the cycle of making New Year's resolutions that you probably ignore, you can close those private tabs and kick back knowing those pesky ads aren't going to follow you into the new year. How does a burner browser work, and why didn't I know about them when I was sharing a computer with my roommate? A good burner browser will block connections to many ad tracker sites before the request to load the website even leaves your computer. Many popular websites use limited lists of known trackers to target and block advertisers. However, if you're visiting a rare website that uses an uncommon tracker not included in one of those lists, you won't be protected. Hate to say it, hope I don't sound ridiculous. I don't know who that man is. These lists of trackers are a lot like a digital bouncer. But instead of kicking me out for scolding the bartender for having a weak Wi-Fi password, one, two, three, four, five, really? We went over this. They stop known ad trackers from coming into your computer. There are many providers you can choose from for burner browsers, but there is one very special one that I'd like to introduce you to. It's okay, sweetie. Don't be shy. Come introduce yourself. Everyone, this is Firefox Focus, but I think she's pretty neat. Yes, you are. You are pretty neat. Yes, you are. What's awesome about it is that it's basically just a search bar. That's it. That's the app. And once you're done, you just trash your session and everything is erased. Super satisfying. And it only takes two seconds to download. Go ahead. I'll wait. Did you do it? Awesome. Using a burner browser can be great for protecting yourself when you want privacy, but it does come at a cost. Not all your favorite websites are going to allow you to block ads, trackers, and scripts. Unlike Firefox Focus, some burners can take even longer to load, which isn't so bad if you're longing for the days of dial-up. I don't care about embarrassing ads for my skin condition. Can my leaked health data be used for anything worse? You bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow, your data will be used. The internet can be a dangerous place, y'all. And if this is your first time hearing this, then you had better go and change some of those passwords because I guarantee yours ain't good enough. Shoot, I ain't lying. Once your information is entered into an app with a less than ideal privacy policy, it's out there. And Control Z ain't gonna do nothing for you now. If you haven't been watching the news lately, things have gotten pretty heated since they overturned Roe vs. Wade. For the boys out there, some women use period tracking apps to track their cycles, help with family planning, and catch health issues before they get out of hand. But what we didn't know was that most of these tracker apps, especially the free ones, have privacy policies that don't protect us from the government, requesting that data to harass or even arrest us in states where abortion is now illegal. Heck, some of these period trackers don't even have a privacy policy. You might as well just shout out your tampon size from the roof and save them the work. I have a medium flow! 
How do we keep the data boogeyman from using our precious information against us? Well, if you're a lawyer, I'd suggest reading the privacy policy. They're long, confusing, and designed to trick you. Aha! For the rest of us, just don't give away any data you don't have to. If your blood type is optional in the app, leave it blank. Oh, and if any app has an anonymous or guest mode, just use that. Most of the time, you still get all the features you would before just without the soul sucking and information spreading. If your app of choice is popular enough, you can even check out Privacy Not Included Buyer's Guide for shorter breakdowns on whether you should trust an app or smart device. Using a VPN seems like overkill to me. What are some realistic scenarios for using one? That's fair. VPNs will scramble more than just text in a DM. They obscure all of the data moving over your computer's network connection, making it unreadable. So let's say you're traveling and you want to check your credit card balance, but all you can find is some sketchy public Wi-Fi. Hey, who am I to judge? We've all been there. But a VPN will help you protect that sensitive data. Those mystical teleportation powers can be especially useful for international travel. Let's say you're on vacation in Japan for the week and you just found out your absolute favorite van, Millie Vanilli, is doing a tour in the US. You rush over to your laptop, connect to the hotel Wi-Fi, and you're met with a nasty, this website is not available in your location. If you got a VPN, you're in the clear. Just flick that bad boy on and buy those tickets like you're sitting at your desk at home. What else can I do to protect my privacy if I don't want to delete any accounts? When it comes to your overall online privacy, your choice of web browser can make all the difference. Just think of all the creepy third-party trackers lurking on the web, waiting to collect your data like a bunch of digital vampires. Those digital blood suckers have one main way of tracking your online activity. Cookies! Stock browsers like Edge and Chrome don't offer the best protection against third-party cookies. Firefox, on the other hand, is the most private and secure major browser available, and the only one with total cookie protection by default, which keeps cookies contained and secure so companies can't track you between websites. Plus, it's easier than ever to migrate off your old stinky browser to a shiny new Firefox installation. Step one, which should also be the first step you follow every time you buy a new computer, download and install Firefox. The first time you open Firefox, it should ask you if you want to import settings and data from Safari or Chrome, just like that. It'll even do your stored passwords. That's it, super painless, right? But what if you want to go deeper? Yes, Firefox has a feature for that. Take a look at private browsing on Firefox desktop. It's a lot like incognito mode in Chrome, except it's wicked fast and built on the same security backbone that powers your regular Firefox browser tabs. And for privacy in your pocket, there's a whole new app. Firefox Focus brings all the punch of a Firefox private browsing tab onto your smartphone. Stop letting these trackers follow you around online and get your buns on over to the Firefox side of things. I promise we only block the bad kind of cookies. If you were to open a Facebook tab right now, how many trackers would you find scooping your data like ice cream from your profile? If only there was some way to know. But that's just it. There is a way. And of course, it's built right into Firefox. Open your browsers and browse to one of your favorite sites. If you take a look just to the left of your URL bar, you'll notice a shield. Click that shield and you'll find the protections dashboard. Sort of like this. This dashboard holds very important information about how Firefox has automatically defended you from three major privacy threats. Cookies. Fingerprints. Are those actual fingers? And trackers. This automatic blocking happens whether you've opened the dashboard or not. But now you can see when your data is being tracked while you browse, so you can start making educated choices about your browsing habits.